Hey guys, I'm Dan and welcome back to the basement Dino Dungeon. Yes, today we have lots of new figures to open up and review. Take a look at them. Okay, check this out. We have a Tyrannosaurus Rex Cockers from Reball. Really cool figure. This one right here is actually an Edmontosaurus from Collecte. It is an old figure, but the very classic one. I always wanted to get this. And right here, we have um, a figure from Eofonor. It is actually a prehistoric elephant. And here, what is this? I think we have the Diplodocus. I've been wanting to get that for like the longest time. So yes, finally we've got that. And here is a prehistoric flying reptile from Collecte. A really beautiful Spinosaurus. This is like a classic figure, which I wanted to get for like the longest time as well. Another really cool dinosaur, not too sure what this is. Okay, um, it's a new species basically, we will take a look at this later on. And our Papo Feathered Velociraptor. Yes, this one has been missing in our collection. So finally we have this. So let's open up, take a look at every single one of them. We will do a comparison with you know other figures from you know the particular series as well. So let's go. Okay guys, so let's begin. Let's take a look at the first figure right here. I'm gonna choose um, this Spinosaurus. This is basically a swimming Spinosaurus. Okay, let's open this up. This is like a classic um, deluxe figure from Collecte. I think it looks really, really beautiful. Wow, looks pretty awesome. I have no idea like which year this was actually like produced. So let's take a look at this together. It's nicely wrapped. Let's get rid of um, the styrofoam. Let's have a quick look at this. So this is basically a new figure. I think it's quite new. It's actually a 2021 swimming Spinosaurus. A quadrupedal Spinosaurus as you guys can see. I love the sail. This sail is actually very, very unique and nice. It's not like, you know, those kind of like rounded, inaccurate Spinosaurus seal. So it comes with this, um, you know, trademark figure of um, Collecte. Um, does it come with any facts? Probably so. Let me cut this open with um, my scissors. Okay, let's take a look at this mini booklet and see what is actually written um, right inside this. Probably there are some facts about, you know, the Spinosaurus. So it's basically known as the Spined Lizard. We all know of that. Okay. So Spinosaurus had an long elongated crocodilian snout adapted for catching fish and a huge dorsal seal. Okay, so that is that is some facts about the Spinosaurus. So you can see this Spinosaurus looks amazing. Let's remove this. It has a movable jaw. You can see it is highly detailed. I think this figure looks amazing. I'm not too sure whether it is able to like, you know, stand well. Let's put this right over here to see. Yeah, for sure. So you can basically display this in our shelf. I'm gonna put this into our, our Collecte, um, Collecte Carnivorous shelf, which is right here. It's kind of low, but yeah. Let me show you guys another Spinosaurus, which, which I feel looks very similar to this. Just a second. All right. So this is another quadrupedal Spinosaurus from Collecte. So this one is definitely way better than this. This is actually from um, all the way back in 2015. I feel this Spinosaurus is actually better than um, the one from Safari LTD. I want you guys to comment down below. I really feel this Spinosaurus looks amazing. It reminds me of the Spinosaurus from PNSO. Yeah, so we have three very, very beautiful quadrupedal um, Spinosaurus right at the moment. So let's put this into our collective shelf um, and let's do it together, okay? Okay, so this is basically the shelf dedicated to Collecte Carnivorous Dinosaurs. And this section here is actually just featuring different Spinosaurus. We have Baryonyx, um, one, two, three, three of them in fact. Two Spinosaurus, I think this is the um, Ictio Venator. We have a baby Spinosaurus, okay? So this is basically the place where we put, where we are going to put the new Spinosaurus. There's also an Irritator right here, okay? Right, let's go back. 
All right, let's move on and take a look at another figure. How about the Diplodocus? I'm really interested to see um, this brand new Eofauna Diplodocus. I think this is like one of the most sought after figures. Let's open this. Just gonna rip this open. Yep. Let's get this out. Wow. This has got to be a beauty. I'm thinking of creating like a new shelf for Eofauna at Basement Dino Dungeon. I'm thinking of um, actually clearing some of these figures because this is basically just dedicated to our mojo. So we can probably move them um, together with um, some of the um, Bully Land figures or some of the mojo figures so that we have a space for Eofauna figures. I think that will look really good um, right over here. Let's see. Or we can do like a mix. Okay, let's get this out. So every Eofauna figure actually comes with a very cool collector's card. So let me just cut this open. Where's my scissors? It's on the floor. Okay, so let's cut this loose. This portion as well. I love collecting the cards. I actually keep them in an album. Let me show you guys later on, okay? So this is basically the Diplodocus. Nice. It comes with this collector's card, so you can actually take this out. You can read the information on this. So it basically says that it is 26 meters in length. Wow. The weight is absolutely amazing. 14,500 kilograms. It can run pretty fast. 23 kilometers per hour. Okay, that's not too bad. Really beautiful card. So this is the Diplodocus from Yo Fauna. I think it looks absolutely amazing. You can see it is highly detailed. The figure, it's amazing. Hopefully it can stand well. Let's see. Let's see. Yep, it can stand amazingly well. I have um the Apisaurus, which has some difficulty standing previously, but hopefully I think right now it's okay. Yeah, I've actually managed to fix it by you know leaning leaning it against you know, a wall or, you know, a glass so that the, um, the legs can actually be back in place, back in the right position. So this is the Diplodocus. I think it looks absolutely amazing. So Diplodocus Carnegie, I think that is the scientific name. It is a 2002 figure. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Yep. Okay, let me show you guys the rest of these cards, okay? Okay, I actually put all my dinosaur cards into an album. Most of them are the um, Jurassic World, um, you know, Dino Rivers cards. You can see we have some cards from um, the Beast of the Mesozoic. Okay, uh, we also have some Camp Cretaceous, McDonald's Happy Meal cards right here. Oh, the Your Phone cards are actually not in this album. I think that's fine, but maybe we can put them um, in here. Yeah, I think it's really big but you can still put them right over here. I think we still have some cards. Let me try to dig, dig them out, okay? Okay, so here are some of my remaining cards. As you guys can see, there are like two step mammoth cards because they actually gave us um, the wrong one previously when we purchased, um, you know, the Atlasaurus. So we don't have the Atlasaurus card, I think. Okay, so let's put all the cards in. And yeah, I think this is a nice way to actually display all your collector's card. So you can see we are actually running out of space. So very cool. All right. We have another one to open up later on. Okay. So yep. Really happy with this. Um, this is basically the Diplodocus. So let's arrange a space and um, for us to actually put these two figures in. Okay. Let's do it. Okay guys, so I'll basically show you where we will be placing the um, EO Fauna figures because this shelf right here is actually too short for me to put in the um, Atlasaurus. It's way too tall, okay? As you guys can see, there's no way we can actually fit this into any of the shelves at Basement Dino Dungeon. So it has to be back at level 3 Colossus Shelf, okay? So stay tuned. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys where I'm keeping this to. All right, let's proceed to our next figure. Which one should we open next? How about this one? This one looks amazing. Uh, yeah, let's open this. 
Okay, let's have a look at this. So what is this, guys? I think this is an Amontosaurus. Let's get this out. Wow, it looks amazing. It looks absolutely amazing. So we need to cut this loose for sure. Where's my scissors? Okay, let's cut the strings loose so you can see. It. It actually comes with a booklet as per usual at Montessoris. You can actually keep this little booklet, I, I guess, at Montessoris, named by Lawrence Lamp in 1917. Wow, that is quite a long time ago. Lizard from Edmonton. Herbivorous from the Cretaceous period. Not too sure where this dinosaur was actually discovered. Let's take a look at our encyclopedia. So here's our book. At Montesaurus is on page 244. So let's try to find some facts about the Montesaurus. So it's basically a dog built dinosaur, which is quite similar to like Iguanodon. So it was discovered in Canada, Western, and Northeastern USA. Skin impressions fossilized with a skeleton showed that the skin was not covered with overlapping scales but with tiny bumps called tubercles. Okay, very very interesting. At least now we know that it is known as the um, lizard from Edmonton. And um, yeah, very beautiful figure. I think this figure it's a very new one. 20, um, I mean 2021. It's a brand new figure. I must say that the new figures from Collecte, they look absolutely amazing. I mean if you take a look at the detailing on this figure, it is incredible. And I love the paintwork. The mix of colors is really vibrant. You can see a mix of red, green, and brown. It looks absolutely amazing. I really love this figure. Let's see whether um, it can stand well, okay? Sorry for the mess on my table, but this is how we actually do unboxing um, videos. So really beautiful figure, okay? You can see it can stand perfectly well. Let me grab hold of, um, let's take a look at some of the um, herbivores that it's actually like quite related to, um, you know, Edmontosaurus. Let's see whether we are able to find some. Okay, check this out guys. So these are basically all the dark built dinosaurs that we have. Okay, maybe some of them are not. Mentalosaurus, I mean, they look quite kind of similar. Um, this is basically Oloro Titan, which is closely related to, um, you know, Edmontosaurus as well. And the Singtosaurus, which is also a dog-built dinosaur, okay? Carithosaurus, also a dog-built dinosaur. So all of them are more or less like closely related. This one, I'm not too sure. This is actually a Camusaurus. Let's see whether it's actually inside this book, okay? Let's see. Nope, unfortunately not. So these are basically all the dog-built dinosaurs we have from Collecte. We definitely have lots more from like Safari LTD and stuff like that. But take a look at this beauty once again. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Let's see whether we are able to fit this into um, our um, Collecte Herbivorous shelf. Yep, so this is basically the new home of our Edmontosaurus. I think it looks great together with um, all the different herbivores from Collecte. Alright, so let's go back to our video. Okay, so let's open up another dinosaur. So this is basically um, the Velociraptor that we have been missing for a long time. Okay, it is actually the Velociraptor from Papal, the fatted Velociraptor. It's a really beautiful one. So wow, I've never seen this before like right in front of my eyes. So finally, we are able to take a look at this. It looks absolutely amazing. So in case that you guys do not know, there is actually a different um, color variation of this figure. Let me just get this out. I don't like to keep all the labels. So this is basically the new, it's not a new one. It has been released for quite some time. Um, 2016. It's quite an old figure, but there's actually like a reprint of this. If you take a look at this, okay, we actually have two of this because we bought the wrong one. Yeah, let's see. I wanted to purchase this, but you know, it's a mistake. We actually bought two of the same one, but finally, we have the um the right one. So you can see, absolutely amazing. I 
actually love this paint scheme much more than um, the other one because it's so, so much more colorful and if you take a, take a look at this you can actually see like a metallic green paint on this Velociraptor yeah so Velociraptors they are basically fatted dinosaurs shall we just remove this I find it quite uh, you know annoying at times so let's just remove this I don't think there's any point um, for us to actually keep all this you know dinosaurs with the, the labors so yeah there you go um the jaw can't be moved the legs can't move but this is actually um a very very intricate and very fine figure statuette of a feather velociraptor in fact i mean some of you guys may know that papo is actually my most favorite brand when it comes to you know realistic dinosaurs all right so let's just have a quick look at some facts about the Velociraptor. Alright, there you go, Velociraptor. Diet is basically a um, carnivore. The height is only 1 meter and the width is not, you know, it's not heavier than 25 kilograms. Swift rubber or swift teeth or swift scissor, all are fine, okay? The small Velociraptor was one of the deadliest dinosaurs. A lightweight, fast and relatively intelligent. It had teeth like daggers, wow. As the adult Velociraptor did not tend or protect its hatchling for long, only the most cunning and aggressive of this species grew to adulthood. Alright, very very interesting. Alright, so we finally, we have this. Um, I'm, I can only show you guys where I'm putting this Velociraptor at the end of this video, okay? Because we have to go up to like level 3 colossal shelf. So let's just pause this and um, let's, I mean, let's take a look at the next figure. How about, let's open this up. This um, prehistoric elephant. Okay, so I don't put the prehistoric elephants from Eofauna together with the um, Atlasaurus because we do have a section which is dedicated to um, prehistoric animals, but I don't think we have enough space to put this in to be honest with you guys okay so how do you actually pronounce this Kono Kono Baladin Kono Baladin okay this is actually a very very cool looking prehistoric elephant let me get this out let me just release this let's cut this loose here as well have to be really careful not to cut um, the figure so there you go, wow. I mean, if you take a look at these two tusks, they are really long and straight. At the same time, there is also this curved outward pointing teeth right over here. It's basically like a prehistoric elephant with um task of a walrus, possibly even more deadly than a walrus. Yeah, definitely more deadly than a walrus. Let's see whether this figure can stand well. Let's see. Yep very stable all right let's take a look at some facts about this prehistoric elephant shall we so you can see 6.5 meters long stuff like that let's see whether there's any information about this um you know kono belladin kono belladin okay one of the largest and most advanced amoebalodon amoebalodon tit <laughs> Representing the final evolutionary stage of the European Shover Tusker clad. It is characterized by enormous dorsal, ventrally flattened, mandibular tusks and very large straight upper tusk. Wow. Okay, let's see whether we can find some information about this prehistoric elephant. Okay, apologies guys. Okay, we couldn't find any extra additional information about, you know, Kono Baladin from the book, but I've actually brought all the different prehistoric elephants to show you guys, okay? So this is basically, what is this? I don't even know what this is, okay? So we have basically have three prehistoric elephants from Eofauna, okay? So I think one of them is actually a Danophtherium. This is definitely a Danophtherium. If I'm not wrong, this is actually the um, step mammoth. And this one right here, this is actually the um, um, scientific name of this um, prehistoric elephant known as, let me see, 
Paleo Paleolosodon. Wow, it's so hard to pronounce. I know that one of them is actually a step mammoth. This is definitely Dinotherium, but I can't remember the name of this. So if you guys can um, help me out, that would be great. Let's see whether we are able to fit all four prehistoric elephants into um, this shelf, which I doubt so because it is fully packed. Let's see, let's see whether we can do it. Okay, so we have managed to find a new home for our Kono Baladin, okay? So we're just sitting right over here along with all our, you know, prehistoric animals and elephants. So really nice. Welcome home, okay? Okay, so next figure, let's have a look at this. Tyrannosaurus Rex Carcass. So it's basically like a dead T-Rex, okay? It's kind of sad, but you know, this is our first, our one and only dead T-Rex, I suppose. I don't think we will be buying any more carcasses um, figures in the future. So, wow, it looks beautiful. The tail is um, actually separated, so you need to get this out. So you guys should know that the, you know, the figures from um, Reborn, they are absolutely gorgeous and um, astounding because they are made of really high quality material. So you can see, this is the T-Rex. I'm not too sure whether you are able to um, open and close the jaw. I don't think so, but you can see the eyes are actually more or less shut. I mean, they can probably make, make the eyes totally shut, but you can see it is like really, really badly injured. So I'm not too sure. You know, maybe we can do like a movie that the T-Rex has been defeated by another carnivore, for example, like the Gigar. Or the spino. So we need to like push this in with a lot of force. Uh, okay, I think in it goes. So this figure would definitely not have any issues when it comes to like standing or you know, I mean, it's not standing. It should be like lying down so you can see. Nicely done. Beautiful. Really beautiful figure. We'll be putting this um, at level 3 Colossal so. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you guys where I'm putting this figure, okay? So stay tuned for that. Very, very beautiful figure. Wow, I mean, if you take a look at this, it is highly detailed. It weighs a ton. It, it is very heavy. Very, very beautifully done. You can see lots of um, blood. The blood is actually slightly dried up. Instead of red, it is actually brown in color. So it basically shows that this T-Rex has been, um, has died for quite Sometime, probably a day or two, plenty of scars. There's like three claws. So it's probably inflicted by the um, Giganotosaurus. Because Gigar has like three claws. So yeah, I mean, that would be cool. I'm waiting for Rebar to actually come up with a Gigar and we can have like a battle. I think that would be awesome. So this is basically the carcass of a deceased Tyrannosaurus Rex. Very sad. But let's take a look at our next figure. We have two more left. Let's have a look at this. This is basically a um, prehistoric flying reptile. Okay, a nice one. I have no idea what is the name for this. I can't remember, so let's have a look. It should be written on the wings. Pteranodon Sternbergi. So this is a Pteranodon. That is weird. Pteranodon Sternbergi. I have no idea. I've never heard of this um, um, this type of Pteranodon. I mean, some of you guys can do some research and let me know. So it comes with... Okay, the jaw is like slightly warped, as you guys can see. It is not closing in the right direction. So I guess we have to like sort of like bend it. But I think that is fine. So it has... You know, a movable, a movable beak. The wings are beautiful. Small little figure. If you compare it with our huge Tappy Jara right over here, which can be fit into our basement Dino Dungeon shelf. So this is a huge. Um, no, this is not a Tappy Jara. I beg your pardon. This is actually a Ku Jara. Ku Jara. Okay. Let's see whether we are able to find some information about the Pteranodon. Sternbergi, a very unique name. I've never heard of this. Let's see. 
Okay, so we do have some information about the um, common pteranodon, but we don't have the information for this specific species of pteranodon. So you can see this is basically the common pteranodon. And I think this is a unique species. I'm not exactly sure, so I need to do more research on this, but it is a beautiful figure. Um, I think we can actually put this in our collecta shelf. Let me show you guys, okay? Okay, so this is basically the new home for our Pteranodon Sturmbergi, okay? Sitting next to the um, Hesicopteryx from Collecte. So this is basically our Collecte row, where we put our different carnivores. Um, there are some, you know, prehistoric flying reptiles right over here. This is a huge Dimorphodon. We can't fit in the Carugera right over here because it is way too tall. This shelf is like too too low, okay? Oh dear guys, I've totally forgotten to show you guys two more, um, you know, Eofauna dinosaurs, which I really love. This is a Gigar. This Gigar is fantastic, but it can't stand. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, did we like forget to show this Gigar in our Giga collection as well? I think we have totally forgotten about this. And this is a Triceratops. There are actually different color schemes of the Triceratops, but I didn't purchase all, I just purchased one. The one which I really love because I feel this color scheme, it's um, very, very nice. All right, so let's take a look at our um, other figures, okay? Our last figure of the day, it's actually this one, which is a prehistoric um, reptile, if I'm not wrong. I'm not exactly sure, so let's take a look at this. It looks absolutely amazing, I must say. So this is basically a smoke Wawelski. Wow, that is a very, very um, unique name. So let's get this out. All right, let's get this tech out. And hopefully we can find some information about this um, prehistoric animal right here. Smoke, named by Gregos. Nibitsky, Thomas, I think this is basically like a, you know, a dinosaur discovered in, probably in Polish, I'm not exactly sure. It is from the um, Triassic era. Okay, so let's see whether we are able to find some information about this prehistoric creature right here. I don't even know, but this is definitely one really beautiful figure. If you take a look at this, a huge one, Smoke. Wow, this is a very, very cool name. 20, 21 figures. Let me check the book. Okay, there isn't any information about this smoke in the book, but we do have some information right here. Smoke was the largest known European carnivorous archosaur and an apex predator. It has serrated teeth and was bigger than any theropod dinosaur of the Triassic or early Jurassic. At first, believed to be an early dinosaur and bipedal, it is now considered to be quadrupedal. Okay, so let me show you guys some of the, uh, you know, prehistoric animals that look like smoke. Okay, we do have a couple of right here. So check this out. This is actually a uh, Postosuchus. We actually have two similar figures. Okay, we also have another one right here, which is the um, Prestosuchus. Okay. I do feel they look like you know, they are from the same family, but I'm not exactly sure. I need to do more research on that. I mean, if you guys can help me out, comment down below. Of course, we have another one right here, which is the um, Caprosuchus, which looks more like a prehistoric, um, you know, crocodile. Another one right here, which is also the Caprosuchus from Papo. So you can see, we, we do have a huge collection of prehistoric animals. So let me show you guys where I'm gonna be placing this smoke Wawelski. Yeah, really beautiful figure. I love this. Okay, so this is basically the new home for smoke. Right here together with the prehistoric, you know, reptiles and animals. Yeah, this is shelf is basically dedicated to um, prehistoric animals. What's the name of this? I can't remember this. I really love this figure. It reminds me of, um, you know, like those kind of uh, super villain. Yeah, it's a really huge one. Livorcher Boyani. Yeah, it's a huge one. A huge figure. Let's place this back. I really love this figure. 
uh, maybe we should do like a video of all our prehistoric animals collection really soon but I don't think anybody will, will want to watch that all right okay so now we are at level three so we will be putting in all these figures into the respective shells okay so let's do it okay so I basically moved all the best of the Mesozoic figures onto the right hand side so that we have more space right here so I'm gonna put the Allosaurus right here um, the Diplodocus is probably here and we need to put in um, our Triceratops and Gigar okay so maybe this direction maybe like this look nicer the Gigar has some issue standing so it actually needs a stand which we already have so let me um, I have to pause the video Okay, so this is basically the new look and feel. We just need to put in the um, Kayu Yara right over here because it's really huge. It's really tall, so there's no place we can actually put this except for you know the shelves in big, um, level three. So yeah, basically this is section is actually dedicated to Yo for now. Okay, right now we are just left with um you know these figures to place in. Okay, so let's put in our Velociraptors. Hopefully we can actually squeeze two of them in. So yeah, there you go. It's a bit tight, but you know perhaps we can actually move um, this one to the left like this. With more space here. Yeah. Okay. So this is basically the new home for the new Velociraptor. We have to shift the Chiliosaurus over to the left so that we have more space right here yeah so this is basically where we put our papo figurines i think it looks pretty incredible all right and now we are just left with um the dead t-rex okay seems like we have plenty of space right here so let's pick this up how should we even put this the other way around i think this way will actually look nicer but the legs are actually sticking out so let me shift this for a little bit okay we are done finally done so this is basically um the area where i put my rebar figures not every single figure you know it's from rebar there are some from you know w dragon and uh yeah i mean uh, i would say the majority is from rebar just a couple of from vite so this is basically where we have put um the dead cockers of um t-rex Okay, so yeah, that's that's about it guys. So thanks for watching this. Hopefully you guys actually enjoyed, you know, some of my unboxing videos and, um, you know, where uh, I show you where I've put all my figurines. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this new format. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Okay, Saturday's video. Goodbye.